welcome you all to the last lecture of uh, module 1 on microwaves and antennas 18EC63 i am dr k shri lakshmi from rb college of engineering as you all know from the previous modules previous uh, lectures we have dealt with uh, microwave tubes and also microwave transmission lines and in the previous lecture that is lecture 6 we dealt with a graphical tool called smith chart which is used for the transmission line design and analysis fine so in this lecture let us look at the concept of impedance matching again the contents of this lecture are taken from the textbook 2 microwave devices and circuits by samuel by leo the objectives of this lecture are to study on impedance matching understand what are the meaning of impedance matching and also look at one uh, method of impedance matching that is stub matching. In the previous to previous lecture while we were discussing about the reflection concept on the transmission line we have seen that you need to have a device or you need to have a mechanism to prevent reflection loss. When you take a general transmission line, a two wire transmission line which I have shown in this diagram, this is actually a matched transmission line. I will tell you why it is matched. So a two wire transmission line has in one end a generator which is going to supply power to the line and the other end will have a load which you can consider it to be a receiver which is going to take the power from the line. And in between you have the transmission line whose characteristic impedance is Z0. You know from the power transfer theorem that if maximum power has to transfer from one part of the circuit to the next part of the circuit, their impedances have to be complex conjugate of each other. Okay? Or else if both sides are resistive then their values have to be numerically equal then only there will be maximum power transfer happening okay so this we also studied as maximum power transfer theorem in our network analysis and uh, design okay now at microwave frequencies this factor or this maximum power transfer is still difficult because you all know that there is reflection wave that is propagating on the transmission line See, whenever you power a transmission line with some voltage, it will result in two components of voltage on the line. One is the incident voltage, other one is the reflected voltage. So, I have told you the reason for this reflected voltage is because Z0, the impedance of the line, is not always equal to ZL, the load impedance. So, at the load end, part of the power will be reflected back on the line in order to and this reflection leads to loss in power because when we discuss standing waves in the previous lecture we have seen the reflected wave will not always come in phase with the incident wave whenever the reflected wave is in opposite phase it is going to reduce the signal strength on the line and in general reflection is bad for a line in order to avoid reflection we need to insert what are known as matching circuits or matching devices at both the ends wherever z0 is coming in contact with a different z okay on the transmitter side it is zg the impedance of the generator that the transmission line comes in contact with and on the receiver side, it is ZL, the load impedance that the transmission line comes in contact with. See, not always ZG is equal to Z0 and Z0 equal to ZL. So, there is mismatch at the generator end. There is mismatch at the receiver end. The mismatch at the generator end is not very severe because the incident voltage is very strong at the generator end and the reflected value is very small so 
the effect of reflected signal on the incident signal is not very much so we always concentrate on the matching network which we insert at the load end okay because at the load end you know by the time the incident voltage travels up to the load on the transmission line its magnitude would have reduced exponentially because we know that v plus term is associated with e power minus j alpha z right so that alpha is attenuation constant and e is the exponential term so the incident voltage exponentially reduces by the time it reaches the load end it will be very weak but then the reflected voltage is very strong at the load because it originates at the load end so there are chances that the effect of the reflected voltage is much more on the incident signal at the load side so we first look at matching the load end so we have to devise or match or put a device here which is going to make z not to see the same impedance on the other side also please remember the impedance that we are connecting here will only make the line to perceive the load impedance as equal to z not but it will not change the load impedance as such the load impedance remains as zl because of the presence of the matching device the transmission line perceives the other end of the matching network has to be equal to z not so this perception helps in reduced reflection and then smooth transmission of power into the load okay so this process of inserting a small device or a small network passive network in place between the transmission line and the load and between the transmission line and the generator is called as impedance matching we insert this device to set right the impedance mismatch that's why it is called as impedance matching hope you all have understood what is the need for impedance matching and what is impedance matching okay so the same thing i have explained here so the need for impedance matching we have seen two types of transmission lines in the previous lecture isn't it one is the flat line that is a line with no reflections and the other one is a mismatch line the line with reflections and power loss fine so whenever you insert a matching network into a mismatch line you can convert it into almost a flat line okay not completely a flat line almost a flat line so we need to match it two ends on the transmission line isn't it one is at the transmitter end other one is at the load end so if you do a matching at the transmitter end it is required to transfer maximum power into the transmission line and i told you as per the maximum power transfer theorem if you have to have the maximum power transfer from one circuit to other the impedances have to be complex conjugate of each other i hope when you have studied complex numbers you know what are complex conjugates for example a plus jb is a complex conjugate of a minus jb both a plus jb and a minus jb are complex numbers one is the complex conjugate of the other how did i say so complex conjugate numbers will have their real parts equal and imaginary parts equal with a change in the sign associated fine so this is complex conjugate so such a matching is called conjugate matching okay then come to matching at the load end this is needed to avoid reflections basically okay so anyway if reflections are avoided the remaining portion of the power transmits into the load that we have seen already so to avoid reflections we need to insert a matching network which will transform or which will help the transmission line to see the other impedance as equal to z not it will not convert it into z not it will perceive it as z not okay so it is needed to match the transmission line to z not 
So what are the various methods of impedance matching? See, there are various methods of impedance matching. There are various types of passive networks which you can insert to match the lines to the loads. So of these, as per your curriculum, we need to be looking at stub matching. Okay. So what are stubs? Stubs are short length of transmission lines. They are small pieces of transmission lines. Okay. And if connected in parallel with the load, between the main line and the load, if you remove the connection, insert a parallel stub and do the connection, then it will help in reduction in the reflections. Okay, we will see how it is done. We are going to just see it quantitatively or qualitatively, I am sorry. And we need not look at any mathematical aspect of it. You are supposed to be knowing only what is single stub and how single stub helps in eliminating reflections. Fine. So now, stubs are short length of transmission lines. There are two types of stubs which you can insert for matching. One is called a single stub. That means if you use a small piece of a single line, then it's a single stub. If you use two similar small pieces of lines in parallel, then it's a double stub. Okay. So as the name itself says, you have only single stub for study. I'll show you. See here. This is the generator end. This is the main transmission line. And here is your load. And in parallel with the load is a single stub. This is again a two wire transmission line. Fine. And similarly, see here. This is a double stub. So, this is the generator end. This is the load end. Closer to the load, you have one stub. And at a fixed distance from one stub, you have a second stub. Okay. So, this is more, um, what do I say, easy to design and easy to match compared to a single stub. Nevertheless, it is having more of uh, mathematical aspects and then complexity in design. So, we are not looking at it here. Just for the sake of showing you how a double stub looks like, I have put this diagram. Now, going back to single stub, I can tell you how it is going to help you match the line. Fine. So, now we have two transmission lines over here. You have to remember. One is the main line for which we are inserting a stub line as a matching network. Isn't it? So, we are inserting it close to the load end in order to match the load to the line. Fine. So, you have to show it there. So, it will be at a point D from the load end. Okay. Then, the sub itself will have a length L. So, it is much much shorter than the transmission line length what we are seeing. Because this itself is a stub line this itself is a transmission line this will also have some impedance isn't it this will also have some impedance and this will also have some input impedance and also output impedance this will also have a generator end and a load end okay we do two types of connections at the load end for a stub line okay one is open circuit other one is short circuit we will not insert any other load over here Okay, the load itself is either an open circuit or a short circuit. How to make a short circuit? You take a piece of copper wire and then short both the ends. That forms a short circuited stub. And if you leave the two ends open, then it becomes an open ended stub or open circuit stub. An open circuit stub is not much used. Why? Because mechanically it is difficult to maintain an open circuit stub. Remember, leaving the two ends of a line open and uh, you can't balance it and then mechanically and you cannot physically maintain the same distance throughout the stub line. You know, this is a, also an open wire line. Then the distance of separation between the two conductors have to be kept constant all through its length. So, if you leave this end and this end open in air, then because of the vibrations, they may move here and there spoiling the distance between the two lines that will spoil the electrical characteristics of this stub and short circuit is e easy to achieve okay 
So now we have solved the problem of the load end of this stub. It has to be short circuited. What about its the impedance at this end? How it should be? Okay. That is the one which helps in the design of the matching network. Fine. See here, we assume that it is a high frequency line. Because at high frequency line, the characteristic impedance is what? It is real. It is equal to root of L by C. Isn't it? There is no complex quantity in that. Okay. It is only a real number. Because of the mismatch between ZL and Z0, the impedance at every point of the line is not equal to just R0 or the Z0 value. It will have either plus or minus some reactive value. Okay. So, by connecting this stub, we need to choose a point where the stub impedance and this impedance becomes has equal and opposite reactance. Okay. So, we choose such a point which is at a distance d from the load end and then we insert this stub so that the effective impedance at this point and this point onwards is going to be just or not because the imaginary part of this component gets subtracted or gets cancelled by the equal and opposite imaginary part of the stub. So, what are the design parameters in the single stub? One is what should be its load end, what should be its length, what is the distance at which it has to be inserted and what should be its input impedance. Okay. I am talking in terms of impedances, but here you see Y terms, Y11, YS, YD, etc. That is, you know, Y is the admittance value and small y is the normalized admittance, right? So, why are we talking in terms of y's? Because whenever you are connecting in parallel, dealing with admittance is easier when dealing with impedance. You know, when you have two resistors or admittances in parallel, their effective admittance will be just sum of their admittances, individual values. So, the design becomes simpler. That is the main reason we go for parallel connection. That doesn't mean we don't have series stubs. We do have series stubs. You can also insert the stub at this point in series. Okay. So, that will a bit complicate the design. You can straight away deal with the impedances in that case. So, hope you have understood. What is the need for single stub? First of all, what is a stub? It's a small piece of transmission line. What is a single stub? If you use a single such small piece. Why do we need it? It is to match. It acts like a matching network. And why do we need the matching network? Because the line impedance is not equal to the load impedance. What happens if you don't use this? If you don't use this, there will be reflections from the load end and that is going to lower the power on the transmission line. Fine. So, hope you have understood the complete module 1, the impedance matching and all the lectures. Thank you all.